What is it that you really focus on from framing the innovation question and getting your leadership team to focus on the, the key issues? What would be one or two areas that you think are most important in it's such a difficult environment? Look, you know, what's happened is that we have, when good companies have focused on what is called continuous improvement. You know, you do a metric and you improve it every year. What's happening now is discontinuous improvement. And unless we are on the top of that, or un unless organizations are on the top of that, we get left behind. So one of the things that we are doing in our organization, you know, our, our twin cylinders of growth in the past were inorganic growth and organic. And now we've dovetailed that with innovation. So we've set up uh, in Aegis something called the Aegis Innovation Lab. So a bunch of folks looking at, in our marketplace, for our clients and for our customers, what are the kind of innovations that will happen? What are the kind of things that we need to do to improve customer experience? And obviously things like social media, mobile communication are very, very important. And therefore this lab is looking at ways and means of uh, services which will improve customer experience. These are out of the box services or create lateral thinking services. So those are things that we are kind of focusing on. How does the business work now? You've been transforming it, you've been thinking about various business models. How do you make money in this business and, and what do you recommend for your team so that they can continue to monetize the business? The way, the, the, the way to making money in this business, of course, is for our clients to give them the kind of service that they want and actually even give them better. But even better today to monetize the business, as you said, is can we look at things which will disproportionately or disruptively uh, influence uh, our clients' customers. You know, improve customer experience beyond the point, beyond the point that we are doing incrementally and therefore, uh, you know, uh, make our clients look much better. Uh, just to give an example, so we are in the business of customer lifecycle management. So if our customers will, on behalf of our clients, will call us for complaints, requests, they can be by phone, they can be by email, they can be by chat, etc. Now we've introduced two new concepts. One is the entire social media, because we want to capture the entire gamut of customer uh, interaction. They may not be speaking to us, they may be speaking to each other on Facebook and other things, or, and through the mobile. So what we're trying to do is, we're trying to pick up any customer information uh, that the customer gives about a product or a service of our clients. So one, we give a holistic 360 degree view to our clients. And now what we've also started to do is to analyze some of that, what we call analytics, by saying, look, hey, this is really what your customer thinks of you. This is a customer who might want to churn out. This is what a customer might want, actually want to upgrade to, or this is the kind of product and service he wants. If you can do all of this, in other words, if you can really be at the top of what the customer is thinking, that's when you can monetize your business much more. The relationship you have with Tata, do you see that one as a strategic partnership or one that, where they're just a vendor? No, actually, the relationship with Tata is multifold. In this case, of course, you know, Tata Communications is a vendor to us, but we do, as ages, tons of work for the Tata group. So it's both ways. So this relationship, we assist them in telecom, in their entire network of telecom, in the entire gamut of telecom service. In fact, we've been one of their oldest partners. So this relationship is indeed strategic because it's not a single-pronged relationship. It's a multi-pronged relationship that we are working on both sides. And the reason that this relationship, I think, has moved forward is both of us have one aim in common by saying, look, how can we improve the customer experience? How can we provide a better solution to customers? And I think, therefore, I would consider this relationship to be extremely strategic. You speak as a CEO, but also as a person who's grown up as a chief marketing officer. Could you talk a little bit about this nature of transitioning the role and moving from the, the marketing role to one where you're the chief executive? Many come from the CFO's office. Others come from other parts of the company and operations. How would you comment on this in terms of being able to coach other executives? I think I've been very lucky to have a gamut of roles, uh, both uh, in Aegis and otherwise, but I've had almost now 10 years in Aegis, and you're, you're right, uh, prior to this, I was the chief marketing officer. Well, I think the chief marketing officer gave me a very good insight into what customers want, into what are they looking at, and which is very, very important. But I think when you transition to the role of a CEO, there are a couple of more things that you have to look at. You look, you've got to look at the organization from a very strategic point of view and say, look, where are we today? What are we going to be five, ten years from now? Who are our competitors today? Who could be our competitors tomorrow? 
for what are we ma- from where are we making the money today from where will we make the money tomorrow so that's that that is one very important gamut and the other of course thing is in a business like ours which is a people business we were over 40000 employees so a leadership is very important because our our real uh, man asset is our people you know that's our core asset and therefore uh, leadership uh, whether it is uh, moving the company towards innovation a uh, leadership of uh, moving the company uh, to look at new areas i think that a lot of that uh, has to be developed from the top and i see my role as as kind of uh, looking at how do we make the company uh, ready for the next decades the leader as he or she tries to develop skills you've had so much experience what would be two or three tips that you would like to pay forward or give to an individual who is trying to develop their management mojo i think one is uh, you know you've got to lead from the front uh, the way we've tried to do we, we you know our dna our dna is entrepreneurship you know many of us ran companies which were acquired by ages so we've kind of done businesses from a to z so you've got to be in the front your troops have got to see you that you are there with them you're working with them uh, number one number 2 is that while you do that uh, it's important to give people a lot of responsibility and say look uh, you know we make you accountable for this but we give you all the encouragement we give you all the uh, should i say uh, the space that you need to do that and that's what we've done so we said look uh, we want to, our goal is to do b a b and c in the next 2 or 3 years this is the core team which is going to do it we're going to give we're going to make you accountable but we're going to give you all the tools Uh, we're going to give you all the instruments that you need to do that uh, and finally i think is uh, in today's world especially we've been talking of innovation and disruption uh, i feel it's important to tell the team that look think different it doesn't matter if it doesn't work we may not make every new thought commercially successful but the dna of the organization should be that we think different we think we try to think ahead of the curve because only if you think ahead of the curve Uh, you will get a differentiated return you know otherwise you could be like any other uh, you know company or competitor what would be the comment that you'd like to offer or a thought uh, to your employees if there's anything that we haven't covered already we are in the business of uh, you know outsourcing we're saying that look uh, we can do the job uh, that you want us to do very efficiently uh, in a cost effective manner now the whole outsourcing business uh, was broken up to what is called onshore which is business done you know i do work for royal bank of scotland in manchester which is what we do uh, then it's near shore which is either geographically very close by could be i northern ireland for example or it could be and for for america it could be you know central america etc and the other of course is offshore uh, which is places like indian philippines now a lot of our clients say for particular businesses where there is very very uh, important local nuances they said look we want citizens to speak to citizens because of the nature of the work but at the same time the cost pressures are on us so we still want to do it cheaper so what we did is we said look we invented a new term in this business called cross shoring what we did is we took a bunch of 50 americans and we brought them to a city in india to work for a, a travel company and uh, what they're doing it's the same folks who were uh, working for us in the us it's the same for the for the for the customer it's absolutely the same the infrastructure is in fact better because rental costs in big american cities can be high so the infrastructure in this place in india was even better but the cost was much cheaper because the costs in india are a fraction of the cost in america similarly what we do in our center in malaysia is we work for a lot of japanese clients so we've got a lot of japanese people staying with us for a couple of years and uh, working for those clients so the way i see it is that look if there is something that your client wants you know can you innovate so we use the term here called cross shoring and our aim is to see for example in our center in malaysia to have maybe people of 70 80 nationalities so it's citizen serving citizens but it's citizen serving from an offshore location and therefore from a client perspective much cheaper because the cost of uh, cost of living in these areas is much cheaper but from the ultimate cons- customer experience it's the same you know so these are examples of innovation that we do it day in and day out coming to your other question look we are in the kind of business 
where the real raw material is people. And therefore, to people who are working with me and people who are working you know, down the line and so on, we have to mean what we say when we say that, look, our real, raw, our real core competence or our real uh, strength is our people. And therefore, our vision that we've done in ages is happy, uh, happy employees, happy customers, and happy shareholders. And the happy employee comes first.